All right, let's do another. Let's do another. I'm going to do a couple more problems and then finish the hair early. Okay, everybody got that one. So let's look at the next one. We've got a 10 pound block that initially, initially has a speed of four feet per second. Um, and then, then we apply a force of eight T squared, determine the velocity of the block when T is equal to two, and it tells us the coefficient of kinetic friction at the surface is 0.2. All right, in English units, that, that is the weight. Right, that's not the mass. Anytime in this class we do pounds, that's pound force, right? That is the uh, weight of the object. So when we draw our free body diagram, let's draw our free body diagram, it's, it's 10 pounds straight down. I prefer to keep everything in pounds, feet, feet per second, feet per second squared. Why? Because Gravity is 32.2 feet per second squared. I might use gravity somewhere in my equations. So I like to keep feet, feet per second, feet per second squared, and pounds, and then everything will work out. All right, here's our free body diagram. We've got the weight acting straight down, the normal force acting up. We've got 8t squared, some weird force, but I mean, it's a force that is going from zero, it's increasing at a square of the time. So it's you know, getting larger and larger. Uh, this one, let's don't overthink the force of friction. Force of friction is right there. And it is 0.2 N because if it has some speed, then it's, it's slipping past the, um, the table. All right, so there's my free body diagram. Uh, let's keep our usual axes and let's sum our forces in the X direction. Uh, 8t squared minus 0.2n equals mass. All right, so here, mass would be 10 over 32.2. And technically, I think that's the slugs. We could go into slugs, pound force, pound mass. Don't, you know, if, if you're in pounds, you divide by 32.2, as long as everything else is in feet and feet per second. Because I'm about to multiply times the acceleration in the x and that acceleration in the x is going to be um, feet per second squared. All right, that looks like it has a, a lot of unknowns. Do I know the time? Yes, but let me wait to plug that in because it's changing. Do I know the n? Not yet, let, let's, let's figure that out. Uh, all right, so let me jump to my y equation. Some of the forces in y. N minus 10 equals M-A-Y. Uh, what is the acceleration in the y direction of a box that is just sliding across the floor? Zero. Uh, so N is equal to 10. Now, can I go ahead and plug that in? I'm only going to plug it in if it's not changing from a time of zero to two. If, if it really is... 10 the whole time. Yeah, it, that, it came from this equation, and this equation is not changing. Uh, so I, I will go ahead and plug in 10 right here. So I've got 8t squared minus 0.2 times 10 would be 2. So minus 2 equals 10 over 32.2 ax. Okay, I could plug in a time of 2, and I could find the acceleration after 2 seconds. And that's what I do if that's what the question was asking for. Does, it, does the question ask, what is the acceleration after two seconds? No, it says determine the velocity after two seconds. All right. So I could find the acceleration. I don't have the value here, but, but you could get the acceleration is something. But then I would ask myself, is this constant? Because if you're lucky, maybe it'll just be constant. Then we can use constant acceleration equation to find velocity. Is that constant? No, because that T is changing. All right, so what am I going to do? Let's just write an equation for acceleration. So let me uh, divide that over to both terms. 25.76 uh, T squared minus 6.44. Okay, now, anybody, how can I find the velocity? Integrate. 
Absolutely. Integrate. Integral dv equals integral a dt. We're lucky it's just in terms of time, so that's not too bad at all. So let's integrate 25.76 t squared minus 6.44. Uh, over here, is it just v or is it v minus v initial? And this one has a v initial of 4. Don't forget, don't forget that initial condition. These are definite integrals, all right? And this would be 25.76 t cubed over three minus 6.44 t. Now, when it asks, what is the velocity after two seconds? Now I can plug in two. And I would get a velocity of 59.8 feet per second, 59.8 feet per second. And then that's the answer. But, but so do you see how weight and plug in time of two after you take the integral? Because it's not a constant. Don't plug in things that are changing before you take the integral. All right, now the question doesn't ask for this, but what if I had asked, what's the distance that it has traveled after two seconds? You need to integrate velocity, but, but be careful. And I think a lot of you saw this on the test. Bring that four over, and there's your equation for velocity. And then you could integrate that. And so you'd have like a 4t, a right, on that um, equation for your velocity. Okay. 